television, you got all these people sitting around this great big turkey and big families and it looks like life is so wonderful. And the reality is that so many times there are more uh, uh, domestic balance and conflicts at Thanksgiving and Christmas than any other time. Because people get together in families who really don't like each other and don't spend time around each other. They add a little fire water to that. And either before or after dinner, all hell breaks loose. And so it ended up being everything but Thanksgiving. Okay? But we're not going to worry about that part. I want to first give you the biblical basis in terms of Thanksgiving. I want you to make um, a note, if you will, in the scriptures. You can read in the Leviticus, the seventh chapter, I believe it is. And uh, when you read in Leviticus, you're going to find that there's a reference to various offerings. The first big offering that's mentioned is a peace offering, okay? And the peace offering is significant because... The peace offering, and the scripture is Leviticus 7, verses 13 through 15 in terms of scriptures. The peace offering was an offering that was mandated by God when he started doing the feast. And the peace offering became an offering of thanksgiving, and it laid down parameters in terms of how you were to prepare it, what you were to bring to God. Well, why did we have the offering, the peace offering? Well, we had an offering of thanksgiving because... What happens in Thanksgiving is that we are becoming aware of how sinful we have been and how great God is through his mercy that he has blessed and sustained us in spite of our sinful, unworthy, undeserving condition. And so the Thanksgiving is an acknowledgement of God's goodness and his grace and his mercy. And we come before God so often not in a posture of thanksgiving, but most of the time we come begging. I need, I need, I want, I want. But we never stop to thank him. And for those who are parents and your children might be old enough, you know that you have an appreciation for when your children come to you with love and appreciation as opposed to only showing up on the first of every month wanting the subsidies, uh, either for rent, car, or whatever. Okay, so it makes a difference in terms of how your mind is. And so Thanksgiving, uh, coming from the point of Leviticus, we always had it referenced throughout the scripture. And there are a number of scriptures I can share with you and you can look these up and enjoy them uh, as you are engaged in your own worship and praise. Psalms 26 verse 7 talks about having a voice of thanksgiving, okay? Psalms 50 verse 14 is a very important psalm because it also helps you understand who God is. It says, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay the vows unto the Most High. So many times we make promises to God that if you deliver me, I'm going to do A, B, or C. Well, if you make such a promise, you better keep it because if you don't keep it, there are consequences. So thanksgiving is a gift a time of acknowledging and appreciation of what God is doing and who he is, okay? Uh, Psalms 107, verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For his wonderful works to the children of men. And then we ought to go on and appreciate Romans 7, 24. Oh, wretched man, that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is our deliverer. So we are thankful for our victories in Christ. We say that in 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us or takes care of us through Jesus Christ. Psalms 100 verse 4. We're talking about just giving God thanks. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalms 95 verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. The scriptures are full of instances where we are to have thanksgiving. Psalms 107 verse 22 says that the, talks of the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Uh, sometimes you, it's not just a verbal thing, but it takes an effort 
to come and give thanks. It takes an effort for you to get up and come to church and to be here when you could be home and just say, well, Lord, thank you for another day. Let's go in the kitchen and let's see what we got. And you are through with it from that standpoint. Okay? But we want to continue what God has said. And second, in 1 Timothy 4.3, uh, Paul talks about uh, receiving things with thanksgiving and with the spirit of thanksgiving. So again, thanksgiving is so important to us. Now, you say, well, Pastor, that's good, but how did we get to the situation that we have today? We got all of these stories about the pilgrims, okay? The people in the tall hats with the funny white collars. And uh, sometimes we forget what happened. You know, many Native Americans protest Thanksgiving, and they're really sorry that they fed them. Uh, <laughs> if they hadn't fed them, they might, they might still own Manhattan, you know? But uh, again, what happened? In 1620, the Mayflower left England and came over here, and they had a hundred and some people on board. When they landed here, it was cold in the winter in Plymouth, and they had to stay on the ship, and half of those people died while they were on the ship. They suffered and they died through that first winter. And some of these people came out of religious protests because and we've talked before of what happened in England when Henry VIII created the, the Anglican Church and people felt that they were being forced to worship and they were having all kinds of hardship and they wanted a place of freedom to worship. And so these people were called pilgrims because people who make a journey, that's the name you give to them. Each year, Muslims make a pilgrimage to Mecca because that's the holy place. We in this country often make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. We just don't have to walk. We fly over. They meet us with nice air-conditioned buses and everything is first class. So it's a whole different ball game. But it's still a journey connected with faith. Yeah. And so what happened when these people got here is they were in serious trouble. They were dying. So many of them had died. 50% of them from sickness and disease on the ship and they went through all these problems. There was a man that they met who was an Indian. His name was Sancho Santos. And the interesting thing about this man was he spoke English. Well, how on earth did this guy speak English? And what had happened to him was that he had been kidnapped earlier by some travelers, some sailors, and he had been sold into slavery, and he got his freedom. And when he got to London, he got passage and he got back, so he understood the language and the culture. And he was the one that taught the pilgrims how to plant corn. And he told them how to eat which plants and what was poisonous. Because, you know, you just can't walk out and pull everything out the ground and eat it. So he helped them through all of this. And when all of this had occurred, there came a harvest time, which is this time of the year, where the people were harvesting this corn. And corn has been such an important staple. It still is today. And so there was a decision made that there would be a feast. And the feast invited this tribe of Indians uh, to come that this man had put them in touch with so that they were now helping each other. And so the Indians brought to this meal, the feast lasted for three days, the Indians brought to this meal five deer. And the other folks went out hunting and they found some fowl which ends up being wild turkey. And the Indians had showed them how to make food with the corn. And so these people ate and they learned and they shared. And this was a time of thanksgiving because even though it was a harvest festival, they were thankful that they were in a new place. They had food, they had friends, they knew who they had lost and how many people had died. And it was a time of celebration. So you see, thanksgiving is an acknowledgement of what God has done, and it's not just a hallmark and a Black Friday moment. Okay? So, I knew y'all didn't get the last part, Black Friday, but it'll come. Okay? So now, we continue to have Thanksgiving from 1621 until the 1860s when Abraham Lincoln became president. And when Lincoln became president, he instituted a National Day of Thanksgiving. And it grew from that period to where we are now in terms of that being 
a celebration for us because he was a man of prayer. He understood that the nation was in trouble, but he also understood that the nation had come this far because of the goodness of God. Today, we as believers have thanksgiving every day that we get up. Every day we give thanks to the Lord. Every day we confess that this is a day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. Every day we are thankful for home and family and health, holding back the destroyer which could come and wipe us out. We're thankful for life and we're thankful for the peace in which you allow us to dwell in this land which is turning its back against you on a daily basis. But yet we are praying, Father God, because you are going to sustain those of us who are believers. Because the word tells us, when you read over in our Psalms, that we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a yes. seed begging bread. Yes. And so we are blessed, and our faith is what's going to get us through this. Yes. And so we want to talk about this significance of Thanksgiving because we don't want you on Thursday to be hung up on whether or not you had a turkey or somebody invited you to dinner or you just didn't have anything at all to eat. It's not important whether you have a sandwich or the bird. Okay? The important thing is that you have an opportunity to thank God. And it is a time when there will be the stuffing of people. Isn't it interesting that folks decide to have Thanksgiving dinner for the homeless and Christmas? But these people need to eat the rest of the year. They don't seem to worry about it then. But they worry about they do that. And it's such a waste of food. This country wastes enough food to feed part of the third world where people are hungry. We will have food thrown out. We got people cooking food that they're not even going to eat. That's out of habit in terms of it. When I talk to my sisters about Thanksgiving, you would think they hear the army coming in. I got a ham and I got a turkey and I got all this, all this different stuff going on. It's wonderful if you have it and you have family to share it with, but I'm concerned about those who don't have it and don't get caught up in a sadness and a pity party and woe is to me. What am I going to do? I remember one of the best Thanksgivings that the Lord and I ever had was about three years ago. This was about three years. We, we were in the L.A. area. And one of the things that, that we did earlier um, when we were married is that we had family Thanksgiving dinner. And it was really for the benefit of the kids. So we would uh, go to L.A. and we would have uh, Thanksgiving dinner with uh, my first wife, my daughter, and the family. And we would have, and then Chai and the boys would come. And we'd have, we'd have a, a great family dinner. And so we, we did this for several years so people got a little comfortable. So one, Chris, one Thanksgiving, the Lord's now up there, we went, we decided to go, um, I can't never remember, I think it was a Marie, I don't know, it was a Marie Calendars, I think it was a Marie Calendar. And we went to this Marie Calendar for, for dinner, even though we'd already had all this food and stuff, this, this is what we decided to do. Oh, that was the best meal. It was so good, I had to order two, because one wasn't enough. And I mean, it was big meals, and the, we were still talking about the young man who waited on us, and they had like homemade biscuits and gravy and all that stuff. Food was just superb. It was an idea that you just didn't have to. See, I don't like this idea, especially for you women, that there's this, this, this built-in bondage thing that you got to slave and cook, you know, while people sitting there watching ball games and all that food. Yeah. Now, because I don't believe in that, I expect to see you at prayer on Wednesday night. From six to seven. Okay. I don't expect anybody to just be in the kitchen because I can't come to prayer because I'm too busy yeah. cooking. Because if it wasn't for God, first of all, you wouldn't have nothing to cook. And second of all, you wouldn't be here to partake of it. Okay? Because he didn't promise you that you have to be here Thursday. He's just saying it'd be nice if you are still here. And I trust me, if you're not here, it ain't gonna be important to you. Because if you go home to be in the Lord, you ain't gonna be worried about Thanksgiving. <laughs> But you got to keep this stuff in perspective, okay? And so we want to be thankful in terms of what we are. But I'm sharing this with you because you as believers, you know everything I just said. Yes. The important thing is that you will have an opportunity with members of the family and loved ones and yes. general conversation to share the goodness of the Lord. Yes. To share why you have a peace of mind and a comfort in your spirit. Yes. To share why you're not worried about money and you're not worried about bills, and you're not worried about Donald Trump. 
Donald Trump. Yes, yes. <laughs> Donald Trick. Don't worry about Donald. Okay? <laughs> God's going to take care of Donald. Okay? <laughs> no, no, I, don't, I mean to call him out. I was, I, last night I, I spoke to the, uh, the California State the African American Caucus in the Democratic Party, a couple hundred people last night, and I told them, I said, you know, we get to, need to get to the point in America, and I say it here all the time, that we're not telling God about the problem, but we're telling the problem about God, okay? And I believe, like I told them, Donald is going to run into a whole bunch of difficulty. I told them that we remember what happened between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Palm Sunday, they praised them and laid down the leaves. Good Friday, they nailed them up, okay? Same people. And Donald will get into some really deep stuff because he's not that bright and his money is not going to get him out of everything. So we don't stay worried about Donald. All you have to do is pray. If God took care of Pharaoh, he can take care of Donald. Amen. If God took care of Caesar, he can take care of Donald. Amen. If God took care of Nebuchadnezzar, he can take care of Donald. Amen. Okay? The word says that he raises them up and he puts them down. Yes. But he had never yes. said that they were yes. in control, right? Yes. And they think that they in control. I remember the king of Tyree in the in Ezekiel. He reached the point that he thought he was in control. Yes. He even declared that he was a god. <laughs> and God took him out. <laughs> took him out. Took him Hallelujah. out right away. So we're not going to be worried about Donald. We're just going to keep our eyes on God because it does not follow that he has to be there for years. Well, you know, God is not going to let us suffer. And he can still make changes. You know? Because Donald doesn't control either his heartbeat or his mind. Right. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was all that and a box of chips and the same day he found himself going out in the woods and all them years he crawling around like an animal yeah. until he came to his senses seven <laughs> years later and when he came to his senses seven years later he says there is a God in heaven. <laughs> all right. I was mistaken. <laughs> I am not in charge. He is. And the only reason that Donald will function like he's in charge is because we stop praying. Ephesians 6.12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Principalities. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to be in prayer now. Don't wait till he make a decision and then we pray. Let's pray every day. Father, neutralize the Donald. Yes. Neutralize him. Yes. Neutralize the racist appointments. We're not worried about racism. Right. You know what? We were black and we came through slavery. We were black when we came through the Civil War. We were black when we came through segregation. We were black when we came through Nixon and Reagan. And we will still be black when we come through Donald. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so if we black, what are we worried about? Right, right. We need to be focused on the word exactly. and not on the man. Exactly. Okay? Because God is bigger than the man. Right. And so our Thanksgiving prayer this week is going to be thankfulness, Father, for what you have done for us. Yes. Yes. We could have been yes. just by accident of birth born a few miles south and life would be a lot different. Yes. We could have been born on the other side of the world and life would be a lot different. Yes. We see so far this year that over 4,000 people out of a hundred and some thousand refugees who have fled Syria and gone to Greece and Germany, over 4,000 people lost their lives at sea, drowned, trying to get to freedom. At least 300 last week. And here we don't have to go and get on a boat. Right here in this hemisphere, we've had such a racist policy in this country that the people fleeing Papa Doc from Haiti mm -hmm. on life rafts and inner tubes coming over here 20, 30 years ago were intercepted by the Coast Guard and sent back. But yet the people who didn't look like us, who were coming from Cuba, they were led into the country as political asylum. Right. And we still have this problem. Okay? Now our hearts go out to both groups of people. 
The people are not responsible for their circumstance, but the government is responsible for how it's treating the people. Right. All right? Amen. And so we don't want to fall into the trap with the Donald. It's not us that are worried about immigration and a wall. It's some old rednecks who can't accept the fact that the world is changing, their day is over, okay? And they're going through trauma. They're going through trauma. America is changed in terms of who we are. Hallelujah. And we have always been a blending of all people and all cultures. How many of you, well, you maybe don't know, the Irish are here, right? Right. But did you know the Irish came here as a result of the potato famine in Ireland? Amen. <laughs> and they had to come over here because they had to find some more potatoes, a place where things could get a little better. Yes, everybody's come here for a reason. And everybody's got a right to be here when you get here. Okay? So we don't want to get hung up in the divisiveness. We want to be prayerful. The corn says, in God we trust. We want to trust in God through all of it. And we want to be his instruments through all of it. And we want to give him praise and thanksgiving through Amen. all of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are, I'm wishing that, I'm not wishing because that's the uh, secular. I'm, I'm blessing and I'm commanding the blessings and the favor of God upon you, your household, your family, your going out and your coming in, your interactions that you might be a blessing this week to those that you interact with. Ooh, and that you will maintain a perspective in balance yes. so that you will not get caught up in the madness. Thank you, Jesus. There's no reason for you to be in a store on Friday. Y'all know why they call it Black Friday? It's not, it don't have anything to do with our color. I always have to remind you of that, okay? Because the bottom line is, when the bottom line, when it's black, there's profit. But do you know that we have had such an increase in violence on, especially at the Walmarts? We got people shooting people and fighting and stuff over items and Standing in line on Thursday evening, oh my, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And so you don't need to get caught up in that. You need to be about your business and prayer. And if there's something on sale for you, God will get it to you. Amen? Amen. So I'm, with that, I'm going to conclude this. I stayed ooh, I went a little bit beyond what I wanted, but I wanted you to get it. Um, we have prayer Wednesday night. We will not have... Bible study Friday because that's Friday after Thanksgiving. A lot of y'all still have turkey hangover and you won't be able to uh, come out. So we're going to give you another week. What we do have today is two things. We have a birthday cake for those who have birthdays in November. And we're going to share that cake back there. If you're here, if you are here, then you can tell them they missed it and we ain't saving yeah. it for you. Okay. But we are honoring November early in terms of.